Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today we are going to be doing a peachy palette review for June's peachy palette. I know some of you might be asking yourselves like what is a peachy palette and if you don't know I will link some of my previous peachy palette reviews down below in the description box that will tell you more about it. Basically it's a glitter pack that comes out each month from peachyoliveglitters.com. It's first come first serve. She makes a couple announcements on social media and when you see those announcements run because they sell out really fast. Some of you guys who got June's palette asked me to do a review on this one because you had a hard time figuring out how to style these colors. I was really inspired by this palette the moment I saw it. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I'm going to show you my project idea for these colors and it'll also give you an opportunity to see what these colors look like all kind of blended together and under epoxy. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. guys so here is the june pg palette it comes in the super cute box you get five bags of two ounces of glitter each this is paris island that was like the matte pearl color solomon which is extra fine like gold mix you've got broadway that's like a gold silver and like navy mix almost karaoke that was a super sparkly gold um like multi-size metallic mix and then we got a beautiful chunky mix, which was Marshall House, probably my favorite color out of this palette. And of course, a super cute glitter snob sticker. And I love what it says inside these boxes. I definitely hide stuff from my kids in them too. All right, so getting started on our tumbler, I already base painted a swirl using Ultra Matte True Navy, Metallic Finish Silver, and Metallic Finish Gold from rust -Oleum. And I kind of spray painted it in just like a random swirl pattern, similar to how I would base paint any other like Gypsy Leopard tumbler. I'll link some of my older Gypsy Leopard videos down below that you might find helpful when base painting your colors for these types of swirls. I'm using epoxy method to apply my glitter and I'm using less than five milliliters of epoxy. In this video, I was using a fast set epoxy and it was actually curing as I was putting it on the cup so it was super hard to spread. Anytime that happens I just put a little extra heat on my cup and it helps me to smooth out the epoxy and kind of get more like spreadability. <laughs> That's probably not even a word whatever. Um, like long story short we just got to get this fully coated with epoxy with a very 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 thin coat. As thin of a coat as you can possibly get. All right, and then once we've got everything completely uh, coated evenly, we're gonna start on our glitter. I'm gonna start with the largest section of color, which is gonna be uh, the gold section where we're going to paint our leopard spots. I'm gonna be using Solomon for this section, and Solomon can go either way. Sometimes it looks silver to me, sometimes it looks gold. I can't really tell if it's like a champagne gold or what let me know in the comments what you think it is <laughs> but i can i think it can read both colors okay over a gold base though it certainly did look like a champagne gold so i just ran with it and as i'm like swirling the cup here we're just going to move our cup in a like rotating swirl as we lightly uh, sprinkle on our glitter and we're not going for full coverage yet we're just kind of mapping out where we want our colors to go so think of this layer of glitter as like the rough draft I'm next going in with Broadway, which will be my other second largest accent color. Um, this is the second largest section that we'll have on the cup. And again, we just wanna have really light coverage as we're still kind of mapping out where we want our colors. Moving on to the next color, I'm going to put uh, Marshall House in just some like random accent swirls, small swirls, not full swirls. We're just going to put a little here and there to create some depth and some interest between all these different fine silvers and golds, okay? Kind of break it up a little bit. 
Marshall House really surprised me in that you have holographic pieces, metallic pieces, and gold pieces in this custom chunky mix. It's absolutely striking on a cup and it makes a huge impact. So a little bit goes a long way. I do end up adding more of this glitter later on in the process because I just loved how it looked so much. Um, but anyway, you guys have seen me put together a gypsy swirl so many times, so I'm not going to go too into depth on the instruction here, but I mainly want to show you guys how I laid out these colors. Next, I'm going to go in with karaoke, which was that beautiful gold just to sort of fill in some of our sections here. We're still going for very light coverage. I didn't really have much of a plan as far as color placement. I sort of just went for it. And really what I wanted to do here was kind of like blend all four of those colors together um, to create something really beautiful. All right, and then once we have our rough draft done of where we want all our colors placed in the swirl, I'm gonna go back through with each color one by one to just really let it rip and get full coverage through each color section as well as get some more blending because I don't really like harsh lines in my swirls. I like them to kind of all be blended sort of like you would with a regular like ombre blend on a cup. Once I'm done with all that, I'm going to let it dry for about two hours and then I'm going to aggressively tap off the excess glitter and discard it or you could save it either way. Um, keep in mind, I did use fast setting epoxy, so my glitter did dry pretty quickly. To apply our leopard spots, I'm going to use Alumalite's Amazing Sealer. This is just like Mod Podge. It's a great adhesive. It just doesn't have like the same smell as Mod Podge, which I really like and it's really easy to work with. So I'm using an angled makeup brush um, and I'm just going to paint on my leopard spots freehand. It will definitely help if you have like a picture handy to reference like spot placement and like the different shapes of spots, um, but just really go for it. Uh, the key here is to not get them perfect. <laughs> you wanna have like an organic looking, um, you know, layout of your spots, don't get it too evenly placed or anything like that. Make sure that our glue doesn't dry before we apply our spots. I'm only painting on about five spots at a time before I pour on my glitter. And we're just gonna repeat that all the way around the swirl of our cup. I absolutely love how bold and beautiful this matte pearl glitter is for leopard spots. No base paint required. We didn't have to add any colorant to our glue because the color on this matte uh, glitter is just so bold and it's so opaque. So if you're struggling on what to do with some of these matte glitters that you guys might have in your collection, consider using them for spots in the same way because the results are just so striking and bold. I absolutely loved it. I let those spots dry for a couple of hours and then again we're going to aggressively tap off any excess glitter and then I am going to spray seal this with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint and let that dry for about 20 minutes before we move on to epoxy. All right, next I'm gonna apply our first coat of epoxy. I've got 30 milliliters of epoxy here and that was just enough to get this coated. I'm gonna let this first coat dry for about four to six hours before we move on to the next step. All right, and now that first layer of epoxy has been drying for four to six hours. I'm now ready to add our colorants in what is the second layer of epoxy for this tumbler. So I've mixed 30 milliliters of epoxy for this layer, and I'm going to divide just a little bit of it into three extra medicine cups. I should have between 15 to 20 milliliters left in my big cup of epoxy, and that's what we're going to spread onto the cup first. You want to have okay coverage on this layer of epoxy that we're spreading on here, just enough to coat the whole cup, and you want to be able to freely glide your finger over the cup with the epoxy, so not too much and not too little. After I've got that evenly coated, I'm just going to hit my cup really quick with my torch to pop any bubbles, and then we'll start mixing up our colorants. I'm using a gold mica, 
in one of them and then we're also going to be using like a really pretty like black charcoal gray this is cauldron from simply sarah's custom creations and you don't need too much just like a little bump of it at the end of your stir stick will be fine i'm going to have all these colorants linked and listed down below in the description box and you really don't need a whole lot of this stuff you guys we're just going to traipse in a very small amount of the colorants and then in one of these medicine cups, I'm going to take some of that Paris Island glitter. That's the same color that we used for our leopard spots. And we're going to use that as a colorant, actually. I couldn't find a pink color or a mica color that matched this beautiful royal blue. So instead, I figured I'll just mix a little bit of this glitter into the epoxy and use it in the same way that I would a colorant. And it actually worked so beautifully. I love how it just looks like suspended in the epoxy when we use it in this way. Um, but it's also really important when we're doing this that we don't have too much epoxy already on the cup because we don't want to get a lot of movement with this type of like subtle accent that we're doing here today. So using my stir stick, I'm just going to kind of drag a little bit of that color onto our cup in a swirl pattern, kind of framing out those leopard spots. If at any time during this process, you feel like you got a little heavy handed or got too much on there, you could just scoop it back out with your stir stick there. I would just maybe make sure that you kind of wipe it off with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol before you go in with a different color okay so after i got the blue down i went in with the gold just very subtle lines with the gold i didn't want too much and then lastly i went in with some very fine lines with that black and once we've got all the colorants on there you don't want to add any heat that's why we torched it prior to adding the colorants um, because with this type of design i don't want those colorants to move i don't really want to fan them out i really wanted these as just some subtle veins to add some depth and interest to our design All right, and then once I was happy with the placement on those colorants, I sprinkled in some Marshall House. That's that really pretty chunky mix that I talked about earlier is my favorite color out of this palette. And I'm just gonna gently sprinkle this in here and there. Less is more on this. This is just a nice detail to add a little more depth and interest to our design. All right, and then I'm just gonna let this dry for about four to six hours, and then I will go into another epoxy coat right over this. So you can just go straight over this layer. Um, it's definitely not gonna be smooth at this point, so just go straight into another layer of epoxy. And I'm gonna let that dry for about eight to 12 hours before we move on to sanding and decals. I wanted to show you guys really quick how I will weed really detailed uh, decals. So the name that I chose for this tumbler, I really wanted a delicate and thin script font. So anytime I'm working with a really like detailed script font, I always try to weed it one piece at a time um, and avoid pulling on the decal at all costs. So you would peel away the excess vinyl piece by piece and trim it away with a kiss cut using your craft knife to avoid putting any kind of like pressure or pulling on your decal that can trip you up. Um, you also kind of want to weed it in line and in direction with the letters, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to articulate that, but working as gently as possible. All in all, this only took me about five minutes to weed, um, but by taking my time and going just one section at a time and trying not to put any like stress or pulling on that decal definitely helps a lot. It's also important to remember to make sure that you're choosing the right cut setting for your vinyl. This is like a chrome adhesive foil vinyl, so I will search for like the premium adhesive vinyl setting uh, in the Cricut custom options. Um, and sometimes it takes just practicing on a few different settings to get the right cut. Uh, if you find that you're having a really difficult time weeding your vinyl, it could be because it wasn't cutting deep enough. Um, and then I've already cut the offset version of my name. Um, now that Cricut Design Space has that offset feature, it makes 
offsets a total breeze so easy to do and I'm just going to layer my vinyl by eyeballing it I don't have any kind of special tips or tricks I will say that when you're working with some of these vinyls and with this particular kind of transfer tape that I'm using, which I will definitely link down below, it's important that you don't pull up on the transfer tape. Rather, you put your decal face down and pull the paper backing off by peeling it back. That's going to ensure that no matter what kind of vinyl you're working with, or what kind of transfer tape you have. It makes things so much easier. You never want to try and really pull up on that transfer tape because um, you're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> and I always pull that paper backing off first before I transfer it onto the cup, just so that when I go to transfer it, it comes off with no drama once I'm ready to put it on the cup. I'm going to trim off all this excess paper backing and then I always use the hinge method for applying my decals on my cups. All right, so now that my decal's on there, I am ready to apply my final coats of epoxy. I've got 20 milliliters of epoxy here and I'm just going to spread this all over my cup like I normally would, getting beautiful coverage. And we're gonna let that dry for four to six hours and then I'll just immediately go straight into another coat over that. I almost always can anticipate not getting perfect results from that first coat over my decal, so I just, We'll go ahead and save myself some time and effort and just go right into another coat over that and I get much better results that way. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments and I hope I was able to provide you with some inspiration on how to style some of the colors from the June Peachy palette. I absolutely love these glitters. I thought they worked beautifully together. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thank you so much for watching my video and we'll see you soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.